<laughs> so, well, being from Utah, Alabama now, uh, it's probably one of my questions. Being from Utah, uh, that's over near York, over near Livingston. Yes. Um, I've been there. Uh, it's a very small town. So how in the world did you get involved in music to be so passionate that you, that, that you are now? I was born that way. Was it your grandmother, though, that no. might have fed you? No. Uh, we didn't have an instrument. We didn't even have a phonograph. We were poor folks. We paid our debts. We owned our house. My father never made over $60 a month. And that was wonderful for him. He had no ambition. My mother sold. She did everything to keep us clothed and all that. And she finally bought me a piano when I was 13 years old. Wow, that's what locked it in, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But as a child, music was always, uh, uh, of course, all the music I heard as a little child was at Sunday school. So I grew up with sewing, what is it, bringing in the sheaves? And, yes. And such as that. It uh, love that we hadn't come in yet. I was older <laughs> when yeah when that and then the garden came in. But up until then, of course, in school we sang songs there. But uh, my brother went to Birmingham. My older brother is seven years older than I was, and he brought me a little toy xylophone back. I think it was an octave long, and I learned practically every tune I knew. I could play it. But <coughs> we had no system of music in the schools. We did have singing once a week when we sang Old Black Joe and such as that. <laughs> then our high school bought the orthophonic Victrola came out long about then. And they bought an orthophonic Victrola, which had a certain similar sounding as to what it was. And uh, the one who played it, she had a particular preference for the second Rhapsody of Liszt. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the most gorgeous music in the world. We still had no 